Barolo is always nice. Shit. Can't ask how much. Restaurant. You have to pretend you're infinitely wealthy for some reason. Okay, flicking, looking. If only I knew the name of any other wine. What's a wine? Is the one Hannibal Lecter drinks real or a joke? A bottle of Barolo it is. Lovely. There it is! Oh, shit! No! 45 quid? I've just spent 45 quid on wine! That smells good. Is that a Cumberland sausage? It's my birthday week, so I'm being nice to myself. That's an onion gravy, isn't it? I thought I'd throw a party. And in advance of the party, I'm going to go speed dating. It'd be great to get a date lined up. Speed dating? And a party? Mark, you know that if you end up a basket case, I'm the one who's going to have to wheel you around the National Army Museum. Look at us, Jez. We're letting our lives slip through our fingers. Maybe you don't care, but I need to get out there. And I'm never going to meet a woman in a pub or a nightclub or an art gallery or a bookshop or any other formal or informal social gathering. Realistically, it's just not going to happen. Do you think you're going to eat all that? I don't know. It is a bit too much, but I'm hoping if I eat it quickly, my stomach won't notice. I'm hungry. That is not my problem. I'm the skinny one. I need food more than him. Yeah, I might just Robin Hood this baby. He's such a tight ass. Won't even replace the widescreen. How are they supposed to brainwash me with their adverts if I can't even see them properly? Recognise this, Jeremy. I went to get the Cherry Garcia out to defrost and look what I found inside. Look, I know what you think happened and yes, you're right, I have eaten all your ice cream. This is it. This is the line. You have crossed the line. Read the mitigating circumstances. There are loads. A sausage has gone! Oh my God, Jeremy, a sausage is missing. Is this what it's come to? I've got to carry my food around with me now to stop you from... Right, well, I'm sorry. You've driven me to this. What are you doing? I'm making a list of all the household items that you have permission to consume. Oh, for God's sake. Toilet paper, OK. Soap, OK, but not shower gel and no razors. If you're poor, grow a beard. Tea bags are allowed within limits. Limits? What limits? No making a pie out of tea or anything weird. Look, Mark, lay off, will you? The thing is, and I keep meaning to tell you this, but basically, a few years ago, Mummy gave me a nest egg, and I kept on meaning to invest, but it turns out I've spent it. You ate your nest egg? You're meant to sit on your nest egg till it hatches, not eat it like some greedy mad chicken. Well, the solution's obvious. Get a job. Yeah, fine, whatever, but it's difficult, you know? There just aren't that many media positions out there. That's the reality. So, do something else. Get on your bike. I can't believe you're trying to make me get a job not in the media. You're such a bastard. You have to pay rent, Jeremy. That needs to happen. Put the sausage back. I'm deadly serious. You, you never pay any rent. If you start stealing from me as well, that's it. You'll have to move out. This is the final straw. Mmm, delicious Cumberland final straw, dripping in onion gravy. What? Die for me? Away! Away? What way? I prithee, speak more kindly. Why dost thou frown at whom? At thee! At me? Oh, We're why at me? As far as I can make out, we get to go out for a bit in an hour. And then we have to come back for two hours. You're kidding. I think I'll die if this was on television. Nobody would be watching. Oh, God, why aren't we watching television? Can't believe coming here costs more than a film. I've got eight on DVD at home. We're watching this when for less money we could be watching Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. Shh. Shall call thee Jove, shall wait upon thy cup and fill thee nectar. Their enticing eyes shall serve as crystal. I'm going to pretend I am watching heat. Okay. Let's pretend we're just watching heat. Smile on me. And with coronets of pearl and bells of gold circling their pretty arms, in a round ivory bout, these two shall swim Yo, let's and just dive go. to make We're on a date. Screw the date. No date is worth this. I'm back on the horse. I'm going. No, I can't. Excuse me. 
He's leaving me with two women. I can't date two women. I can barely date one. This is amazing. I wasn't meant to be out till 11 and it's not even nine. I've time travelled. I've made time. I could do anything. I'm golden. Here you go, mate. Go and see the second half. It's shit. So, as you know, I'm off to Frankfurt this afternoon. Now, normally I'd appoint a caretaker manager. Oh, Johnson. Let me count the ways how I admire the organisational and interpersonal skills of thee. Right in front of me. Nice. Reckon Sophie was almost definitely the one. Yep. As soon as she's horrible to me, realise I want her. Classic. The bloody lever's gone! Lever! Go to get the lever! What? The lever come off! Mark, are you okay? Oh, oh, wow! Oh, God! And for his next trick, Mr. Corrigan will slide a 2B pencil up his anus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, acute social embarrassment plus intense physical pain. I'm really pushing the envelope. <laughs> you OK, Mark? What happened? I don't know. I, I was just looking at Sophie and then... Yeah, she could be a bit more subtle, couldn't she? Is it right she's taking Tolly to your birthday? Well, I need the numbers, so... <laughs> oh. Perhaps it'd be better if you left the self-harming for the weekend, mate. <laughs> Jeff's doing a joke. Jeff's doing a joke. Everybody quiet, cos Jeff's doing a joke. Freak. <gasps> nice. Anyway, about the party. I mean, Skunky Pete wanted to go with me, but I thought if you wanted the moral support, we could go together. Us? Oh, got to choose. Nice geeky Dobby or Saz, my primetime newsreader type girlfriend. Dobby, d d listen, that, that's lovely, but the, the thing is, I'm, I'm going with my girlfriend. You've got a girlfriend? Turns out it's a surprise. OK, well, cool. Did the right thing there, pretty sure. Don't listen to your heart. That's what no one tells you, but that's probably the real grown-up truth. You want to go for another one? Maybe. Shall we wait until the kids have gone? <laughs> hey, look. The other one's talking to those freaks who tried to push us their personality test. Look at that bloody new wellness loony. Oi, you know what would be fucking funny? The two of us in there, we should do their test. Take a weirdo for a ride around the paddock. Freak out the freaks. <laughs> <laughs> Might also be quite warm in there. Phew, this is gonna be funny. I'm gonna freak the fuck out of this sheep. He'll probably walk out worshipping me. Uh, the personality test is just a few questions to determine how you're being prevented from unlocking your true potential. Oh, OK. I'll tell you what's unlocking your true potential, mate. That tie. Right, question one. Do you often make efforts to make people you're not fond of laugh or smile? <laughs> I'll fuck with him. No. Actually, it's more of a yes. In social situations, do you crack wise to help yourself fit in? No. I mean, yes. But no. No. It's a no. The answer's no. What was my plan again? Great. You know, a lot of different people come and do the test, but we find what they mostly have in common is that they're not where they want to be in their life right now. Losers. Right. Would you say you're where you want to be in your life right now? Fuck you. Not particularly these issues have their roots in childhood. How were things in your family when you were growing up? Well, you know, my dad left home when I was 10, so... What do you think the 10-year-old Jeremy would have said to his dad if he'd had the courage? Don't know, just... Don't go. Don't go. It's OK. You're in a safe place. This is a laugh. <laughs> I thought I knew what I was doing with my life, but I haven't got a fucking clue. Don't worry. We'll carry on with the personality test. This next section is going to answer a lot of those questions. This is funny. This is definitely pretty funny. OK, Sophie due over tomorrow for the breakup handover. Nothing too heavy. Olives, crisp breads, dips. These are the heartbreak snacks. 
No stew, ribs or chocolate dildos. Oh, you're right, Marco. Listen, I've just got a couple of mates around and we're getting smashed. Is that cool? Brilliant. Yeah, I, I was going to ask if you might be able to make yourself scarce tomorrow night. Uh, I've got a bit of X stuff. And... Oh, yeah, 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 whatever. Hey, listen, Marco, you wouldn't have any fucking nose powder on the sly, would you? No, no, I'd... I don't really... Why don't you run out and get us some coke, eh, hey, Marco? Yeah, go on, get us some coke, you big freak. Then we can sit around watching your porno collection. <laughs> um, t- t- to be honest, I-, I don't really know where to get coke and, and I don't have a porno collection. Sure you do. You're getting a tubby just thinking about it, aren't you, mate? <laughs> you filthy little dirt box. Hey, man! Marco's got a chub on! <laughs> Wow, this is great, isn't it? Three fun-loving girls in the flat. Anything could happen. I suppose anything could happen. Anything could happen. They might shag us. Don't say it, Jeremy. They might shag each other. There's no need to actually say it. If if you say it, you'll break the spell. I'll open the tequila. Good idea. (laughs) This is probably their dealer. What shall I say to their dealer? Soph. Hey, Mark. But with the handover's not till tomorrow night. I think I would remember, Mark. No, look, I'll, I'll show you my diary. See? T- tomorrow night, you've got it wrong. Oh, right. Well, well done, Mark. One point to you. Sorry. Can I come in? No. What? Well, maybe we should stick to the appointed... OK, I guess, if, if you're here. OK, let's try and keep this festival of recriminations brief. I- ignore the girls. They're, they're Jeremy's girls, they're not my girls. <laughs> Thanks for my stuff. It is your stuff. It, it's so great that you could come round. I'll, I'll see you in the office, I guess. I thought the whole point was we were going to have a bit of an air clear. Unless, of course, this is a bad time for you. No, not sitting. I don't know if I'm up or down at the moment. I mean, Tolly from the office asked if I wanted to go out for a coffee and I just told him to get lost. And then I realised, you know, I've got to move on at some time, so... Hey, Mark! Get back in here so Lindsay can jerk you off! <laughs> What? No one's going to jerk me off, Sophie. It's just a stupid joke. I'm not the one that's going to jerk you off. She's the one that's going to jerk you off. <laughs> Please, carry on. Are you trying to humiliate me? What? No. God, no. Hey, Mark! Come and put your tongue up Lindsay's asshole. It's clean. <laughs> yeah, well, you seem to have moved on pretty fucking quick. Well, look, I'm, I'm sorry. They're Australian. They, they think it's all fine. I'm so sorry, Soph. I don't even want to put my tongue up anyone's asshole. Thank you, Johnson. Got my rotisserie chicken. Got my kilo of extra mature cheddar. Bottle of Cristal. Gonna slip on my headphones, slap a DVD on the portable and have me a homeless hip-hop cheesy luncheon banquet. It's a victimless crime. Johnson report it's stolen. Who loses? Wallace and Gromit. Gromit doesn't care. Gromit's fine. Hi, just um, buy some stuff, if that's okay. Just tap in your pin for me. Here we go again. This is so easy. What's going on? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Why won't it go? Nothing's happening. Shit, I'm going to get caught. I'm going to be tasered alive. I think your card's the wrong way around. Oh, of course. Wrong way round. <laughs> yeah. My card, my silly card. Bad card. Always wrong, aren't you, card? Calm down, not too much. And can I get thir- uh, fifty pounds cash back as well, please? Eight zero zero eight. That is a nice pin. Oh, Elgar. Why do you always find me at my lowest points, Elgar? Hmm. Why toast when he can roast? Another roast. That's the third today. What's nicer than a roast? Yeah, but chain eating roast. Who is that? Sophie's dad, and her cousin Barney. Barney. It's the wedding tuna, your half. Oh, what? Really? Heartbreak tuna? Oh, no, Jez, just bin it. I mean, not literally. There's no need to be overly dramatic. Freeze it. See how I feel in six months. So, they came all this way just for the tuna. They were dropping Sophie off. She's going back to work tomorrow, so... Sophie's going back to work? But that's outside the terms of the treaty. Six weeks, six weeks till we go back. This isn't six weeks. This is three. Shit. I've got to get in there to stop her lies. What lies? That I jilted her at the altar. Right, technically. I mean, I'm on your side, 
but technically, that's not a lie. I did not jilt her. Technically, I married her. Well, maybe, but I think what sticks in everyone's memory is the bit where you jilted her. Oh, shit, if you think that, what's everyone else going to think? Oh, God, I've got to get in there. If she wants a PR war, she can have a PR war. I'll Mandelson her. Nobody wanted New Labour, Jeremy, but now we all know how it works. Great night out. You guys know how to celebrate. God, we're so horny. We're like a pair of porn stars who aren't on antidepressants or anything. So, this is where the magic happens. That's right. And you're the magician. I guess so. I am a bit magic. Would you be able to show me some magic? <laughs> OK, here we go. God, we are so hot after the cab. I wonder if I'll be able to do all the stuff she was whispering in my ear. Might need a good foothold somewhere, or a harness. Is this a good idea? Drunk sex with my new manager? Yeah, yeah, it's probably a good idea. There'd only be a problem if there were complications. There aren't going to be complications. Relax. <laughs> wow, this is definitely happening. OK, got to focus. It's very important for my future career development that I give my manager an orgasm. Stop dicking around, Jeremy. Let's get going. OK, well, I'd like a bit more foreplay, but apparently I have to perform on demand. Don't be bitter. This has got to be great. Brilliant sex, then novelty bong, then watch a film together. If Mark's got around to buying a new scart lead, that is. Maybe if we got another scart lead, I could use it to plug the digibox into the VHS player. Record straight onto that? Or I could use the analog aerial into the video and off that, well, maybe switch around the... Jeremy. Yeah? Do you think this is going well? E uh yes. No, <laughs> it's not really working. Oh, I... I thought it was. What's working about it? Well, um, now we're talking about it, it is maybe withering under the lights a little Look, bit. Let's not kid ourselves. There's nothing going on here. <clears throat> we're just two planks of wood rubbing against each other. Do you think? If you want, I could put a finger... Let's just forget this ever happened and get some shut-eye, yeah? Oh. OK. Ah, oh, this is like the time I made Mark turn that boring DVD off in the middle. The Killing Fields. This is probably how he felt. Frustrated. And horny. Are you OK? Is everything all right? Yeah, it's for personal and career development. Did the first day yesterday. Best 400 quid I've ever spent. Plus, you get a free book. The new wellness centre. Oh, Jez, I think I've heard about these people. There's stuff all over the internet about them. Yes, that's right. There's a conspiracy about them on the internet. There's a lot of stuff about an asteroid in here. Yeah, it's all based on the seven sacred truths from the golden tablets found in the asteroid which crashed in Siberia in 1911. It's a really great book. You'd love the chapter on orgones. Orgones? Orgones are the invisible molecules of universal life energy which govern our moods and our actions. Negative orgones are the source of all the problems in the world. And you believe that? Well, how do you explain all the problems in the world? Well, I mean, I couldn't just... There are so many historical and economic factors that... Exactly. You haven't got a clue. But, c come on, Jez. Asteroids? Orgones? I mean, what would you say if I came home one day talking about that kind of stuff? I'd say, that sounds fascinating. Please tell me more. See you later. Jeremy's in a cult. Jeremy in a cult. It does have a certain ring to it. Dobby, my cupboard lover, stationary sex queen. I can't ask her out, I'll be dead in the PR water. Oh, don't think about it. Just drink buckets of tea. Pig in tea break? Oops, Butterfingers, your clumsy wife. She has gone beyond now. That is too much. That is way over the line. Maybe I'll stick it back to Harpend and Harpend and Harpend and see how she likes that. No, can't we leave the mugs out of it? Even the mob never hit the families. So it's true. I heard about the rumours, but I couldn't believe it. I'm so sorry about your mug, Mug. And so you know Sophie's behaviour has become unacceptable. I've instructed her to take a break. She's going to spend some time with her parents in the country. Right. Wow. Oh, my God. This is piggin' massive. I've won the spin war. Would you like to? Smash it. Uh, thank you, but no. Very well. I can't believe I let this happen on my watch. Right, Dobby. Who cares what people think? I'm back, baby. The bitch is back. 
Wow, the ladies. <laughs> nice to see it's almost as disgusting as the gents. Yeah, well, it used to be all pink and tidy, but then feminism happened and we all just started pissing on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> of course, girl power. <laughs> wow, this is better than watching Jeremy dying on stage. She really seems to have a thing about confined spaces. Just hope I don't go off in my pants again. <laughs> What's that? It's a nightclub, it's, it's normal. <laughs> She, she's probably on drugs. She, she's probably having the time of her life. Oh, God. I know that boot. I know that foot. I know that crying sound. Mark, I really think we should check on her. She might have passed out. No, Dobby. Hold on. No, Dobby. Mark. Hi, Sophie. You know her? Uh-huh, yeah. I'm his wife. She doesn't know what she's saying. She's off her head on street drugs. What have you taken, Sophie? Who knows? Who the fuck cares? What, what are you even doing here? I, I thought you were staying with your parents. I ran away from home to see Barney, thanks, dickhead. So, please, we are a, a bit married, but, but not properly. It, it was never consummated. And you're not going to get in Nana's cottage, you know, so you can shove it out of your arsehole! OK, I'm going to head off. But, Dobby, I... I've been caught out, like Angus Dayton or Harold Shipman. You know, you're like a life support machine, Mark. Well, thank you, Sophie. So instead of giving life, you suck it all out of people! Uh-huh. My beautiful wife. I want to go home. 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 What's going on? He wants to go home. I'll take care of him now, thank you very much. All right, Grandad, hold on. Can't he give us ten? He's in a K-hole right now, but in ten the speed will kick in. A can of Coke and a ciggy, he'll be right as rain. Oh, I don't want to sit down. I want to run behind the car all the way home. Yeah, well, we've missed our slot. Dance witch abortion are on now and they're rocking out. Ah, oh, Mark, of course. I'm so sorry about all this, Ian. Ian? He is Ian, isn't he? Suppose now I've jilted his daughter, I could call him Captain Cockring and it wouldn't make things any worse. Two pants. Did I do it right, Two pants? Yeah, yeah. You did it fine. What did you do to him? You've ruined this. Why couldn't you have got him to suck you off after the gig? He did what? Barney? What makes you do these things, Mark? I'm not the one he sucked off. I hate you, Mark. I fucking hate you. Two pants! I love you. Don't leave me. <sighs> he's not all he's cracked up to be. Who's the really cool one? You should look a bit deeper before you go sucking someone off next time. Frick. OK, what now? Go home and roast the shit out of some meat. The remains of an old lady's life. What a paltry set of mementos. I don't want to lord it over Jez's dead great aunt, but I reckon I'd already leave a more interesting set of personal effects. Hope he's coping okay. She is dead, she is dead, dead or Gwen is dead, 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 dead or Gwen is dead. Managing to contain your grief, Jeremy. Oh, come on, she was my mum's aunt. I only met her about twice. It's not like she was Ian Curtis. She was never going to make a seminal album. She couldn't even make very good Christmas cake. It's a pisser, though, isn't it? Cancer. They should find a fucking cure. I think they're trying. Yeah, sure they are. They should pull their fucking fingers out. It's important, Mark. Not a huge reader. Three James Herriot, Frank Muir's autobiography, and the Reader's Digest Quiz and Puzzle Book 1984. Mum's getting 40 grand in the will, and she's promised me half. It's all gravy from here, Mark. Good old Gwen. I couldn't have planned this better if I'd murdered her myself. £20,000 won't last forever, Jeremy. What do you mean, £20,000? I'm going to be a millionaire. I have a mouth, but do not speak. I have a bed, but never sleep. What am I? A river. Nicholas Lindhurst. I think that's the wrong answer section. Fuck this shit. So when's the funeral? Wednesday. But Mum's coming over this afternoon, which will be incredibly boring. You should drop acid at the funeral. Make it more intense. That's what I did at me old man's. It was fucking mental. I was crying and laughing. Didn't know who was dead and who was alive. Shit. Not a dildo. Jesus, Jeremy. Wow. Nice. Nice gun. Must be what a war gun. Yeah. I reckon it's a war gun. This is great. 
This isn't bin or cell. This is a keeper. You're not serious. It's an illegal firearm. It's not illegal, probably. It's just a grisly souvenir. You've got to get rid of it, Jeremy. Where should he take it, Mark? Scope. Leave it in a litter bin for a little kitty to find and kill his mum. You'd love that, wouldn't you? No. I'll keep it in my room. It'll be safe there. I'll put it in a drawer. Oh, brilliant. Well, as long as no-one can work out the intricate sliding mechanism that opens your drawer, it'll be perfectly safe. Yeah, sure. You've got sarcasm. I've got a big gun. Well, did you do it? Have I got my money? Don't do the pause, Mark. You're not Davina. Have I got my money? Yes, you've got your money. Yes! Mwah! You beautiful man. I'm going to tattoo your name on my balls. I'm a millionaire again. But there's a condition. Oh, there's always conditions, Mark. You can ignore conditions. When you sign up for a credit card or adopt a child, there are conditions. They're meaningless. Jackie doesn't trust you with that kind of money, so she wants to put someone in charge of it to control how much you spend. Oh, fuck. It's not Martin, is it? No. No, it's not, actually. Right. Well, who is it? Is this some kind of Brewster's Million scenario? <sighs> it's me. I'm in charge of your money. Oh, brilliant. You're the boss of me. This is your pathetic dream come true, isn't it? No, it isn't. Yes, it is. I've got your balls in a vice. I'm the Iron Chancellor. Now, I've worked out a budget, and I think £70 a week is about right, and I'll take £130 for rent and loan repayments. Great. So, basically, you're my dad now, and you give me my pocket money. You don't have to agree, Jeremy. You're free to turn the money down. That would teach him if I did turn it down. That would wipe the shit-eating grin off his face if I did that. Do you agree? Of course I agree. Obviously I agree. Oh, wow, this is your room. This is so cool. Think I've found someone to do my hoovering. These are your jeans. These are your actual jeans. Look, Jamie, right? This is what I'd look like wearing your jeans. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I've got loads of girlfriends and hash. Look at my jeans. Yeah, that is a bit like me. Here we go. Just typed up a little contract on Professor Yaffle's computer. A contract? Yeah. It's a standard procedure for a new band member. Right. Um, maybe I should just show that to my dad's solicitor. No, yeah. no, no. Sign it, and then we can talk about it later. Before you sign it, it's all a lot of waffle. Hey, uh, Barney. Is it? What are, you, what are you doing here? What's going on? It's cool. Barney's just staying over for a bit. He's joined the band. What? Um, actually, these guys were just saying they wouldn't mind some cheese McCoys. Do you want me to get you anything from the shop? Uh, no, I think I'm fine, actually. <laughs> While you're down there, how about some Ribena and a twirl? OK, uh, McCoys, Ribena and twirl. I'll go grab my jacket. Jeremy. He's Sophie's cousin, for God's sake. You're sleeping with the enemy. Oh, relax, Mark. It's fine. Mark, they want me to sign this contract. What do you think? Should I sign it? Not even sure where you'd sign it. Is that meant to be a dotted line? Who drew this up? A lot of these aren't proper sentences. It's legalese. All right, keep your beak out. Look, Mark, we heard today we've got a spot at the fuck bunker. The fuck bunker? Yes. And we've got an A&R man coming, so we need to have a contract. Everything nice and tied down, yeah? Right, fine. I don't give a shit. Looks good to me, Barney. Go for it, dude. Cool. Uh, McCoy's Ribena and a 12. McCoy's Ribena and a 12. McCoy's Ribena and a 12. He's not sucking you off, is he? No, of course he isn't. Probably would. You have to be very careful asking someone to get you a twirl who would also suck you off. Still, blowjob and a twirl. Maybe it's for the best, though, Jess. Maybe solo, you can do all the things you've always wanted. That rap thing with Howard Marks. I've got to talk to Callie. Talk around. You can be my spin doctor. Tell her why I'm brilliant, why I'm so essential to the band. Uh, OK, sure. Uh, just remind me again why you are so brilliant. I, I mean, I know why, but it's good to have sound bites. Callie! Callie! No, Jeremy, you can't just... Shit, he's entering the chamber. The sacred chamber of satisfactory sex. Jeremy, let's just go. Or you could leave her a very frank note. Or... we could piss on something. No, Jess. Yes, Mark. Come on, it's all fucked. 
This is rock and roll. She screwed me over, now it's her turn. Let's fuck this place up. We're the hammer of the gods. Oh yeah, take that, teabag tin. Yes, no! She smashed my dreams. Let's smash her caravan. Come on! I could make the best of it. Go for a freebie on the skull. He'll get the blame. I'll bank mate points. I'm golden. <laughs> Unlucky, pal. I win. Oh, fuck! The Revenge of Atlantis. Oh, this feels good. This just feels so right, you know? Jess, how long are you going to keep going with the orgy of destruction? Because uh, I'd rather not be here when she turns up. Oh, yeah, man. No, you go. I'm going to stay. I want to see the look on her face. <laughs> no one screws with the Jess, man. Hope she's not too upset. Fuck it, if its healing powers are so legendary, it can fix itself. <laughs> it, Christian security? What's he gonna do? Excommunicate me? Yeah, this is gonna be good. Rub a double-crossing face in it. Jess, I've been looking for you everywhere. I'm sure you have. I got a call from Superhands. He's having an ego attack. He's driving to Festivus with all the windows down, shouting his own name. Reckons he's going to make a supergroup out of hard-flying Kaiser Chiefs. He's talked about that before. So, the thing is, do you want to play the gig solo? Well, yes. Brilliant. So, let's talk set lists. But there's something you should know. Am I actually going to do this? Mark, he went mental. Oh my god! It's a mess. What the hell happened? Yeah, this is classic Mark, I'm afraid. He does this sort of thing the whole time. He's passive aggressive. He won't say anything. He just smashes. <gasps> but my skull! My crystal skull! Yeah, he hates the skulls. He smashed it and then cut his hand in a kind of mad fury. God, how could he? Well, he hates being told what to do in bed. He hates you for pushing me out of the band. I was like, dude, these things happen. But he was like, no! That's when he did the eggs. Really? Yeah. He's weird, twisted, vindictive. He draws horrible cartoons of you and then wraps them up in sausage meat and calls you a sausage muncher. Jesus. On the bright side, he wanted to shit on the sofa, but I managed to stop him. What the? What's going on, Jeremy? He escaped. He overpowered me. They got in. Stop! Stop! Thieve! Fuck off, clean shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the front door was locked. You let them in, didn't you, Jeremy? No. Then how did he open that door, for fuck's sake? Well, maybe you should chase them down, Mark. Maybe if your date saw you beating up a whole gang of children, that would get her hot. Right, you shit. It's mutually assured destruction. Suze, I'm afraid to have to inform you that Jeremy has or may have a sexually transmitted disease. I'm sorry I had to tell you, Mark, but he... shut up! Is it AIDS? Of course it's not AIDS. This isn't the 80s. It's the best STD. Just cute, old, mostly symptomless chlamydia. And I haven't even definitely... Chlamydia? When were you going to tell me, Jeremy? I don't know. Probably... I was going to tell you, sensitively, during the next little bit of time, until he just blurted it all out. Look, Suze, no. Suze, don't go! You can't go. Mark, I need to go. The police will be here any minute, and I'm not telling them I let the burglar go. That's your job. You're an accessory to the crime. Bollocks. Jeremy, if you try anything, I will take you down. I'm, I'm not afraid. Ooh, I can't wait to see this. What are you going to do? Oh, my God. What are you doing? Are you putting your hand on me? Are you having a fight with me? Are you fighting me? I'm doing what I've got to do. I'm going to go, Mark. No, Jeremy. My God, you are. You are fighting me. This is incredible. You're putting your foot behind me and you're pushing me down towards the floor. Finally, you're restraining me. OK, all right, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to keep you here till the police arrive, OK? This is... Why hasn't this happened before? This is what it's all been leading towards, isn't it? I'm confiscating your keys. Oh, yeah, have a good old rootle around in there. You never know what you might find. Mark, Mark, um, 
I'm not sure how much more there is I can do here, so I think I might head off. No, 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 we're having a date. We, we, we can still date. You, you owe me a date. We've had our date, Mark. We've, we've had half an hour date. So. 20 minutes? It, it's too soon. You can't go yet. Uh, I, I won't let you go. Well, I think you might take the edge off the evening if I'm being held hostage. Look, I, I, I wanted to tell you something. Look, Mark, nothing is going to happen, OK? We're not a good fit. You're, you're a weird guy. He is a weird guy. I, I, I tried to let you down gently with the phone story, but now I'm tired and I'm going home. What did you want to tell me? I thought that you might be the one, but, but I, I guess probably not. So, good night. Night. She might be the one. Fuck off, Jeremy. I'm his one. <laughs> so, Sue's off? Yep. Some redundancies are more voluntary than others, eh? She's taking it well there. Show me a good loser, and I'll show you a loser. So listen, that new office of yours, I think it's time we busted its virginity. He's not gonna hump me in my office, is he? Marketing's a petrified forest. I'm gonna need you to swing your chopper. Is that okay, Corrigan? Uh, sure thing, Alan. Oh, God. Firing people. Maybe he's going to make me fire Dobby. He knows I like her. He scented my weakness. Hey, husband. Hi, Soph. How are you doing? Oh, pretty terrible. This wine is so disgusting, isn't it? Yep, it's very horrible. So, how's Jez? He's joined a cult and he's changing his name, but fine. Wow. What is his new name? Jared. Oh, that's not good. I know. So, you had a look at the annulment stuff? Want to go to your new office in a bit and annul the hell out of our marriage? Quick divorce, back for nibbles. So, how are things? What happened to what's his name? Tolly. Uh, no good. I waited till about the fifth weekend and then I said, look, I want a baby, like, pretty fucking soon. And he said, oh, that's interesting. And then, boom, gone. Right. Men don't like babies as much as women. That's my analysis. How are things for you? Missing me? Got anything going? Oh, but, you know, I've, I've got... Someone in the in the crosshairs, but I, I I might let her live a bit longer before I pull the trigger there. Are you though, missing me? Yeah, well, I, I probably do miss you. A bit. She's playing me like a tuba. I mean, I miss you a bit, so. Should I? I could. I haven't made my move on the Dobster. I'm still a free man. Maybe I'm Shaft. Maybe I'm Trump. Yeah, I'm Trump in my dirty wiggy tower. Look at me, drunken one night stand. I mean, she is my wife. Still, finally got to use my bachelor's emergency condom. Oh shit. Oh bollocks. Uh, so, uh, I, I think there might be a, a, a bit of a problem. Uh, it, it's not. It's, it's been in my wallet so long. I, I think the rubber may have perished. Oh, old Meg has broken. Oh, God, Soph, I'm sorry. It's broken? Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I, I suppose, just to be on the safe side, the morning after pill, you, you could... Uh -huh, maybe, yeah. There's quite a lot of powerful hormones in those things, so I might just... Uh... What? Well, just let nature take its course. I mean, chances are on a one-off, nothing's... <laughs> so, so far, are you sitting like that? Like what? Like that. It's comfy. It's just sitting like that. It, it might... Look, this is just how I'm going to sit. I like sitting like this. Stop sitting like that. No. Please, sit up. Look, just relax, OK? I'm not going to sit up. I'm just comfy. That is low. That is really low. She's taken my sperm. And sperm is like lending someone less than a fiver. You can't really ask for it back. 